Well, hello there, YouTube. So this painting is dry today. Again, this is an 8 by 10 inch uh, oil on linen. I'm going to be continuing to develop this still life painting. Uh, this will go on for about an hour or so. I'm going to see how much more I can push this painting uh, today. I'm using the same color palette listed in the, the description box of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here um, in a in a minute. It looks like we may have some unfortunate internet issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint. And um, you know, if there are too many internet issues, uh, let me know. If you can't uh, receive any of the footage or something like that happens, so I'm going to start off with the um, one of the lightest blue sections over there. And I won't talk as much um, as I'm just going to be painting and streaming. So um, anyone that's watching this stream, if you are able to watch it, I don't know if there is another major internet problem happening. But I don't know. We'll find out. I switched uh, my lead white to uh, from lead white number one to lead white number two. So for this layer, I'm actually using it, it's still flake white, but it's walnut uh, walnut oil instead of linseed oil. It's a little brighter. So I'm just using cobalt blue and flake white. Again, this is uh, the walnut oil version of flake white. Ingrid, uh, David, I think that my the chats are uh, delayed on my computer because it's struggling with internet. If it gets too bad, I may have to take that palette off. Um, I was filming a lesson for my students the other day, and again, my internet was going really messed up. My internet was messed up, so I may have to take that um, camera out if it lags too much. So I'm just pushing some of the lights a little bit further. Um, and I, I'm just starting off with the lights, so a little bit more opaque. So, hey, Monique and Ingrid. All right, so now let's start to key up some of these lights, a brighter, more orangey light. I'm going to switch brushes. I have to think a little carefully about this one. I'm going to go with a pure cadmium orange first, kind of as a test. See how bright it is. It's very dark. Saturated, but very dark. So that has the saturation that I want kind of but it's a little too dark so I'm gonna try instead of cadmium yellow pale I'm gonna go to cadmium yellow and a little bit of cadmium orange so I'm gonna use cadmium yellow to raise the value Now that has the brightness that I want. Uh, and it's so simple. It's a very simple mixture. So now I'm going to use that for the lighter areas. And obviously some areas are more red. Um, I don't know if you can see it. I changed the settings on the camera. So you should be able to see uh, more light on the still life and more light on the painting. Though it may still be kind of... Uh, Difficult to read. There we go. Now we're getting the brightness that I want. This is just cadmium yellow. 
I'd say it's about 50 50. Cadmium yellow, cadmium orange. I'm gonna quickly check my connection here. Ingrid, you got the silver silver brush grand prix. Yeah, they are excellent. They are these are my favorite bristle brushes ever. Although um another brand that's really good uh for bristle brushes is Robert Simmons. They have the Egberts, uh which I may or may not use today. We'll see. Now for the for the darks, it appears more of a a deep red. Actually, you're seeing it very saturated on on the screen over there. So I'm gonna mix something for that um, after I get the lights. Connection seems good, uh, Ingrid. Good, good. Um, it was lagging a little bit for me on my computer. The playback was lagging. As long as, as long as it works for everyone else. And for this painting, there really isn't a need for medium. I mean, I, I believe this one will only be two layers. Unless I decide to work on it even longer, which I might, but for something that's less than, say, less than three or four layers, you don't really need medium. Unless you're trying to expedite the drawing, uh, drawing process, like, rapidly or something. There's no need for it. There we go. Now we have the brightness of the flower. Sounds good, Monique. Okay, all right, so let's start to get some of these. They're kind of a dark yellow. I think you see them right here in the still life. So I'm going to go with, for a dark yellow, I think I'm going to go with Indian yellow and say, I have to think about this, Indian yellow. And how about... Or I'll see you now. Now they're certainly cooler now. Um, they're still light, but they, to me they appear to be closer to the greenish. Rather than jumping right to the green, the cadmium greens, I um, went with uh, uh, burnt sienna, not burnt sienna, I went with raw sienna and Indian yellow. Seems to be working decently. Now I'm not going to be painting it, painting it exactly like I see it. I'm trying to stay true to each detail on the flower, but it, it's okay if I add one or miss one. One of the little flower petals is not a big deal. Now especially some of these are sticking out a little more, so I'm going to raise the light. Hey Christine, hello there to you. I'm going to use lead tin yellow. And what you say lead tin yellow and cadmium yellow. So it's kind of like a cool yet deep bright yellow. I don't want it to get too... Cool. 
So that might have been a little too cold. So a little more cadmium orange. I want this to be lighter so that it sticks out. This is now a third plane. So the bright orangey is the middle plane. The side plane of the flower is over here. And now this bright orangey is going to be a light, light plane. So a uh, top plane, side plane, under plane kind of thing. Just one little petal at a time. And I can do some little trickery here with the the connection or the not the connection with the screen so you can see a close up of the mixture. It's cadmium orange, lead tin yellow, and a little bit of cadmium yellow for a nice bright. I know it's not the highest resolution there, but you can at least see somewhat of what I'm mixing here. And I'm still leaving room for those darker reds that are going to fit somewhere in the middle. The lighter playing time, let's get to it. One there. Maybe a little brighter. I don't want to put those light planes everywhere because then I'll cover the middle planes. Mm, so let's say I really got to squint to see. Oh, there's one that sticks out down here. But I think it's a little more orangey. So I'm going to go to Cadmium Scarlet. Pretty opaque paint. Cadmium Scarlet. And now Cadmium Yellow Pale. And we'll make this really glow with color. I'll check that out. I believe this is the very first time I have streamed the continuation of a still life. And um, those of you that are watching this live, you are awesome. Not that uh, the other viewers aren't awesome, but I know that this is not what everyone wants to watch for the most part with my YouTube channel, but those of you that have the patience to see how I build a still life painting from life. Uh, kudos to you. Because building a painting from life is one of the best ways to improve. Yes, it can be very slow and boring. But there's so much to learn. How close am I to the setup? Uh, this is my arm as extended as far as it can possibly extend. Uh, so I'd say I'm about, I'd say three, four, I think I'm maybe four feet away from the still life setup. I'm not very close to it. I can't really get close to it because if my head gets close to see that, my head blocks the the painting. I mean, you do have the camera at an angle, so I'm not going to have it right in front. Okay, let's clean the brush off with a little bit of Gamsol. Oh, good. I'm glad, Monique, you really wanted to see this. Stop hard shot. 
working on a still life today. Okay, now I'm going to push these deeper reds. And on the camera, I don't think a photograph could capture this. Um, there's a, a weird, kind of like a pinkish, orangey violet going on in between the flower petals. Which again is an excellent uh, place to study color. So to do that, I'm going with perylene red, cobalt blue. And let's just try that for now. I'm going to be very careful with where I put this dark. And I want to say it's still... This is a difficult one to mix. I want to say it's still too close to the blues so I'm gonna use transparent mummy burnt sienna to kill off some of the saturation now you can see when you mix puddles of paint I know it's very blurry but when you mix puddles of paint be kind of aggressive with it especially if you're using bristles bristles can handle it You can really get the mixture. All right, let's see what this one will look like. That's much closer. Though it's missing some more of the red. So cadmium scarlet we go. So this is now going to add a fourth plane to the flower. And just like someone mentioned uh, about how far I am from the still life, I actually think it's a good idea to be further away from it because what you're doing is you're replicating something similar to having a, a a live model i am mostly interested in painting the visual experience what it is to really observe something observe uh, someone or something or whatever so the closer i can get a still life painting to being like a life painting you know, like a figure painting or something like that the better. A little bit of cadmium green pale. Now to lighten and desaturate the red. Yeah, bristle brushes are a workhorse. They are awesome. Hey, Mr. Null, uh, went to the thrift store today and found some nice little items to paint. Working on my still life game? Me too, man, me too. And like I uh, mentioned last time, I, there's a big figure painting I've been working on. In it, I don't even know how many still lives are in it. Um, it's like a huge four f or five foot by three foot uh, figure painting that I'm working on. And I think there's about like 20 something still life objects surrounding the model. It's it's pretty fun. Okay, so now that I put the cadmium green pale, I'm just going to go with it and add a little bit more and we're going to add some more light to the stem. Cadmium green pale, tetra vert. And let's see how this one does. And that's good. I, I want it to be much brighter, so I'm going to go to Thalo Green, but only a tiny bit of Thalo Green. 
actually. Thalo Green and Thalo Turquoise. I want too much of it. This Thalo, if you're not careful with it, can put a lot of your colors on a chokehold. Ooh, now that's nice. Bright stem for that. And clean it. We're going to clean out the brush. Hey, Ronald Miller. I'm glad that you enjoy uh, watching. Uh, yeah, hope this helps someone too. Now let's get to the orange. Cleaning off this bristle. Now the orange is not as yellow. It's not as yellowy and I still have to get to that stem. I forgot to paint the light of that stem. We'll get to that in a minute, but I want to put something down for the orange. And it's, I want to say less saturated than the um than the flowers which is weird now that i'm looking at it um so how about this for a less saturated orange i'm going to go to cadmium red deep and cadmium yellow yes it's going to be a bright orange but cadmium red deep is not my cadmium red deep which is an old holland is not as highly saturated so these co color combos are really simple though so, um, sometimes it's the simplicity that works best but let's let's take a look that might work so the value's off oh Thanks, Ronald Miller, for the super chat. Thank you so much, Ronald Miller. Uh, your support helps me out so much, buddy. Thank you, Ronald. Shout out to you, my friend. There we go. That's working. I just don't want it to be that saturated of an orange, at least not as saturated as this. And another way to kill off saturation is with white, of course, so I'm going to go with that. Again, thank you so much, Ronald Miller. You are the man. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, that is the saturation that I want. Not super strong, but not... too dull either and of course I'm using the flake white and again I'm using flake white number two also known as cremnance white um, it is flake white with walnut oil walnut oil can get a little more vivid at least I, I really haven't noticed it to be honest but um, they say that it can be more vivid. I like it because it dries more slowly than the linseed oil one. Okay, so thank you. All right, let's push the orangey, dark orangey for the half tone. And then we're gonna get some more specifics on the uh, the dark glass object. And raw sienna again is an excellent way to kill off saturation if there's too much saturation. Perfect. 
Now, of course, the reflection of the of the tablecloth is going to play a role. And I painted it in the last time, but I think now we can go for more specifics. You can really see it uh, with the uh, camera. But of course, the camera loses light and shadow here. So it does flatten it out quite a bit. So I just have to be careful not to do that. A little bit of cadmium green pale. And I'm going to use cinnabar green light. That's a Williamsburg color. First, though, I'm going to amp up the highlight on the on the orange. Now with the lead white, you can get really, really thick mixtures. So very much impasto for this orange. That's what I like to see. Texture and fluidity in the paint film. Now let's get back to what I was mixing before. A reflection. So of course that's too light. Mm, let's go. Hmm. Burnt sienna. I want to say burnt sienna. Perhaps a little bit of terra vert. Hey Monique, glad you like the surface of the uh, the bottle in the painting. I want to do a little bit more to it. I just realized my easel is a little lopsided. Whoops, sorry about that. That should be better. There we go, now we have the reflection. And I try to use a color change rather than a value change for the most part, but that did need a slight value change. The value change and a color change under here. While we're at it, this shadow is nowhere near as dark anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and Change that up. The canvas it is an eight by ten, eight by ten inch. Now after I do this, I'm gonna have to change brushes now because I went from orange to gray. For those of you on Patreon, don't forget, tomorrow is the first Thursday of the month. So we're going to have our live chat at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now it's weird because this shadow looks, this one right here on the still life looks much lighter than this one. And it's actually angled up, um, which I did in this, but not quite as much. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see you camera to camera, Monique. And uh, Ingrid, can't wait to hang out with you again. I mean, if, if you can join us tomorrow. Alright, so with the other brush, I'm going to push this. It's a very bright yellow, extremely vivid bright yellow. How's about we go with lead tin yellow? I'm trying to keep these mixtures very simple. 
Lead tin yellow. It's a cool light yellow. And that seems to work pretty nice. Um, so I'm going to add some uh, somewhat of a transparent yellow to that now. Indian yellow. Yep, would love to have you there, Ingrid. So we've got lead tin yellow and Indian yellow. And we have some of the flowers over here, or the shadow of the flowers overlapping. I'm going to do that. I'm glad that you're loving the lead tin yellow. It is a really nice... Uh, the one I have is Michael Harding brand. But you can also get it from uh, brands such as Rublev. I don't really know any others that produce it other than Rublev or Michael Harding. Well, that should be about good for that. You have those yellows too. Awesome. I really like transitioning from lead to yellow, which is a more let's. Uh, I know it's it doesn't look that that uh, that bright, but I like transitioning from lead to yellow, which is cooler. So it's like right by the greens. Um, Transitioning from that to the earth, the earthy yellows, um, so like uh, a raw sienna and a lead tin yellow mixed together, they work really, really nice. Yeah, Michael Harding is a great brand. Okay, how about we get to some detail work? I'm gonna put these brushes down. Switch to a little tiny brush. I'm gonna try it to make sure my head doesn't block the footage for you, but let's add some of the details on on the painting now. Williamsburg Cinnabar Green Light. This is not a true Cinnabar Green because Cinnabar, I believe, is a mercuric sulfide. I forgot, or is it lead? I don't know. But anyway, th this is a, a mix of different colors uh, put into one green, light green. I like using it, or you could just go for a cadmium green. Now for a darker green, I'm going to go with viridian and raw umber. A little more detail in the orange. Then I'm going to put a little more of a definite plane underneath. There's also some, I don't know if I should paint them in, but there's some holes now on the orange. I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna put those in. Instead, I'm gonna go and eliminate this outline.
Hey Susan, how did I make the bright orange? Um, if you mean this one, um, I wanted it to be less saturated than this one. Um, this one is way more saturated, uh, which is weird. I thought that the orange was more saturated. Um, this is cadmium red, deep old Holland mixed with Winsor Newton cadmium yellow, and then um, something else into it, but I kind of forgot. Uh, but for the most part, it is cadmium yellow Winsor Newton and cadmium red deep old Holland. I think it was burnt sienna uh, that I put to also kill off some of the saturation. A very there's a very bright reddish section over here. I'm using a little sable to make some of the brush strokes kind of jagged. To add some texture to it. Which should help to define the bottom a little more. Okay, now I'm going to push this color a little more. And I, it, to me, it looks more blue over here and less blue up here. I don't think you really see that on the camera. So I'm going to go with Cerulean. I think I could also use a little more of a violet. So I'm going to go with Diaxazine Purple. Cerulean blue, Daxazine purple, and lots of white. Hey, Ab Abhin, yeah, I'm trying to pronounce your name. Uh, hello there. All right, let's see. There we go. It's a bluish, almost violet color that I'm seeing there. I'm sharpening the edge here and leaving this one soft. I'm going to dry brush up here to make this kind of blend out. Now here is one of the brightest areas so I'm going to go with a lot more white. Again, I'm using uh, the walnut oil lead white. So it's known as, some call it cremnance white, others call it lead white number two. Um, this is a lead white in any case, um, which means it's heavy body and perfect for sculpting out brush strokes. Excellent. That's the brightness that I want. And it's not quite as cold as um, as titanium white, if you use titanium. Okay, excellent. That's what I wanted for that. And now I'm going to put some little texture there. Uh, it gets violety blue across here. Maybe we'll throw in some green, a little bit of viridian. Now that's a nice color. We're even going to throw in some of it across here.
slightly scraping it. Edward Soto. Oh, thank you. Thanks, buddy. All right, now let's add some more specificity to this. There's no way this should be as dark as this. That just there's just no way. So I'm gonna go and start to edit that, and then we're gonna move from here into the the light. And I I see way more violet, in particular in this section, so we're going to add that in now. So it's less saturated. I'm going to mix into the same puddle that I had here. Let's show you the palette. I know it's a, it doesn't look as uh, detailed. So I'm using black, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. And let's see what this will do. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. Perfect. So I'm going to be painting in the penumbra or the uh, light edge of a shadow so we can really make this look like it's a shadow being projected now something darker the so black cerulean blue cadmium green pale Axazine purple. Oh, my old magic trick. Oh yeah, when I when I used to pretend like I could move the the pictures. Yeah, it's, it's my old magic trick. <laughs> All right. And we're really walking a fine line between green and blue, and saturation and uh, right. uh, monochrome. I'm going to use some of the scrap. For those of you wondering what scrap is, um, scrap is this, the, what I put on the side of the palette when I clean it off. I mix it with a palette knife when I'm done with the day, or at least with a painting session, and just put the scrap paint over here. So sometimes I'll actually use it to nullify uh, some areas it's like a nice deep violet brown sometimes it's gray um, but anyway I'm using scrap to uh, desaturate the cast shadow there Hello there, uh, IL TV. I always have the values are perfect. Oh, thank you. They, the values are quite uh, different, actually, um, from here to there. Because th this is so... Uh, it, this is almost impossible to to reach. Uh, in fact, it is impossible. I the the thing that I really like about painting that some artists say is that you're creating an analogy when you're making a painting. Yes, I'm going to fix this. It's a little lopsided right now, but when you're painting, you're creating an analogy. So use the knowledge and use the information that you have, all the tools, and don't copy what you're looking at but interpret it and use that interpretation to get it close to the visual experience okay so let's start to work here I switched off uh, to a different brush 
And let's just keep it simple today. Dax is in purple. First thing I'm going to do is fix the lopsidedness of this. There we go. And this easel keeps moving back and forth. But this is slightly off. So what I'm going to do is go for the edges first. That is, I'm going to now lower this bottom plane. Then I'm going to address the top. Hey, LTV. Let's see. Uh, see, I don't know and I don't understand terminologies and arts, but I enjoyed art, especially painting. Well, thank you. Um, if you want me to define a term for you, uh, I can do that. You know, like um, when I say it's off its center line, it means that it's it's the silhouette is a little crooked. So I have to, for instance, I have to push that there to basically it, it's leaning slightly this way. So I'm gonna push it that way. It was in. Um, uh, Yes, yours is kind of muted, but I mean the ratio of the values in your own painting is so right. Oh, thank you. And I'm going to use, eh, just stay with the oxygen purple. Keep it as simple as possible. Okay. So now I'm going to push this highlight actually to the left. So I'm going to darken it. And actually I'm going to go to the scrap pile, scrap pile and the axisine purple. I'm using it to push the contour. There's something to be said about lost and found edges. All right, now let's get to this highlight. Uh, I'm going to use cobalt blue. And cobalt blue, cerulean, a little bit of white. So I'm moving that highlight just so I can fix the, it was a little crooked before. And there's also some of the highlight showing here, which doesn't, I don't think shows up on the camera, but I see it. It's a very reflective glass. Now this is not quite as, it's not supposed to be quite as dark, or not quite as light, sorry. Make it barely visible. Now I'm going to switch to Thalo Turquoise, Daxazine Purple, Alizarin. For my darkest dark, that still has some color to it. See if we can push this darker. And we can, slightly. I'm also going to use that and change the hue a little bit towards the pink with Paraline. Which also helps to sharpen this edge. I'm going to dry brush near the top so that it appears softer.
I don't want to do that everywhere. I'm going to use that really dark value. Back here. Okay, now I'm going to mix up that violet that I see. I'm going to clean off this palette, or th not the palette, sorry, clean off the brush. Saxazine purple, white, and it's more of a reddish purple, so I'm going to put some perylene into it. Probably similar to what you would get if you had a cobalt violet. And it gets lighter over here. And a little bit of, I want to say, cobalt blue. The purple gets a little more blue towards the right. I think it's really blue underneath. I'd say a Phthalo ish almost. And let's just push the color, why not? Some more Thalo. You don't really see it on camera. I don't think the camera picks up this this brightness. This bright blue. I'm not, I want to say that this also exists up here, so I'm gonna go back to Thalo. Thalo, turquoise, and a lizard crimson. Hey, Thurman. Um, almost at the ending, yes, you're correct, but we're still here. And I think we're going to do a couple more still lives in a row. I'm feeling another still life. Before we jump into the pictures, I'm thinking a metallic uh, still life or something along those lines next time. Definitely darker and more red to our left. And it's not quite as wide as the original, but I don't want to make it any wider because this width will get too close to the orange. For composition's sake. I'm 
a little more. Let's see how much color we can sneak into the dark. I'm sneaking in cerulean. Next to that kind of deepish red. And now this top plane needs to get a little more, a little more purplish. More darks is in purple. I'm actually going to make it a purpley green. I'm going to go to Viridian. Oh, thanks, Monique. I hope you can see the colors all right. I don't really see it too well on my screen. Then of course it gets lighter. So the highlights are going to be kind of their own abstract painting. No oh, thanks Ingrid. Ultramarine blue. Like I said, I'm I'm seeing what I can get away with. It does appear darker and more purple. And let's just let's throw in some perlene red in it just for good measure. All kinds of stuff. And now while we have a dark red, I'm going to go ahead and push this accent a little darker. So the orange feels more planted. Or should I say just feels planted. Okay, now next thing I want to do is add a little more information to this tabletop. And I used a T square last time, so I know that this is correct. Uh, so now I'm just going to darken underneath of it first. And switch brushes. And we're almost out of room of, uh, on the palette. So uh, let's just mix into an old mixture. So Daxazine right into the red and just whatever let's use that hold on a second here and I'm careful not to go over the line that I painted in last time with the t-square because I don't want to lose that straight line Okay, now I'm going to go and add a few more planes up, and I think what I want is to darken this one. It's darker and more red. So Daxazine, Alizarin, mm, Cadmium Red Deep. Maybe it's going to be too red, but whatever. 
Yeah, too red. So let's brown it out with Viridian. And Cadmium Green Pale. A little more Cadmium Green Pale. That's pretty good. Now it's lighter over here, possibly reflecting from the cloth. So lead tin yellow. And we're going to add another dark plane underneath here. A cooler one, one more cerulean blue. Very careful not to lose that line that we made with the T square. Okay, all right, so we're almost there with this painting. I don't want to do too much for it. I'm almost tempted to add some of the texture or detail on the tablecloth, but if I add that texture, then I'm going to have to add some of the texture that you're seeing here, and I think it's just better to leave it more simplistic um, the way it appears now. It does read at a distance. So I'm pretty sure that it doesn't need uh, any more any more details because I'm not really a I can do it so I can paint in to the nth degree as much detail as I want but I'm someone that enjoys walking across so like if I'm in a museum and this is Yupari just walking across in the museum and oh look at that there's this painting in front of me and I go to the painting and I'm like, wow, it's so realistic, but when I get close to it, there's like nothing there. It's just brush strokes. That's what I like to see. Um, I don't like paintings. I don't, I personally don't like painting paintings. I don't like creating paintings that are super, super uh, to the nth degree, like almost photorealistic rendered. I don't really like that. I like um, something that looks like it was observed, like painted from from life so I think that's gonna be about it um, I think we're gonna wrap this one up let's see uh, any questions everyone watching and again thank you for your uh, super chat earlier um, Ronald Miller so any questions YouTube oh yeah yeah hold on while you're typing your questions I'm gonna sign it um, because this one is complete so I'm gonna sign it in gray a bluish gray on the top left so if you have any questions please feel free to ask me uh, art related of course
Oh, thanks, Monique. We got a signature, Upari 2021. It is now complete. Completed painting, ready to let dry. Hey Marvot, thank you. Oh yes, the schedule. No one has asked me about the schedule. Um, I am streaming for the YouTube public, uh, what we're doing here, every Wednesday and every Saturday. For example, Saturday today, um, not today, Saturday is the next one. Um, I'm going to have to miss that one because we have a vet appointment with one of our pets. Um, so today, Wednesday, every Wednesday is usually around 5 p.m. So 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. That's when we will be back next, uh, which will be next week, 5 p.m. So around this time next week, uh, this Saturday, I cannot stream. I have We have a, a veterinary appointment for one of our lovely pets. So unfortunately, it's not in my interest, best interest to stream on Saturday. And thank you all, everyone in the audience for watching. Uh, definitely check out my online classes if you're interested in um, educational content um, check out patreon.com slash upari artists if you're interested in paintings for sale check out my etsy um, if you want to know what colors i'm using and all that please check the description box in fact check the description box of this video of this stream for everything all of the stuff that you are you may be curious about should be typed up for you in the description box how did I light the subject, Mr. Null? Yeah, um, how did I light the subject? Uh, there is a clamp light above the setup uh, all the way to the top right. I'm just using a simple clamp light. Whoops, there goes my paintbrush. I'm going to put that one aside. Yep, take care, Monique. All right, I think that's all the questions. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this uh, public painting, uh, virtual painting session. I'll see you on the same time next week. Take care, and I will see you again on the next one.